All right, students, we are picking up um, with the chapter seven notes on page three. And this is something I meant to put on your notes um, or page numbers, but I forgot. So it would be helpful if you <laughs> numbered the pages. Um, we were talking about the three more phenomenon that that negate essentially that old view of matter as being always continuous. And the first one is black body radiation. Um, this is just black body radiation is when heated objects emit radiation. And this should be really familiar to us. I mean, if you picture like any sort of crime show or I don't know, spy thing, if they're using infrared technology, they're looking at the radiation that mammals or, or human beings or living objects give off. And we can all envision that in our head with like the red being the hot objects and blue being cooler objects and they, you know, can scan houses and stuff to see if there's somebody inside. Um, that's just black body radiation. We give off infrared radiation. Um, any object that's heated gives off some sort of radiation. Um, what scientists expected a long time ago is that you could force an object to give off any sort of wavelength of radiation. And so they, I don't remember what it was they were testing, but they thought that whatever it was they were testing, they should be able to force it to give off ultraviolet radiation. And in fact, they could not get the object to give off ultraviolet radiation. They called, some people called it the ultraviolet catastrophe, which is a little extreme. But um, it just goes to show that, that this whole continuous um, property of, of energy is not necessarily always the case. So there was a scientist named Planck who started investigating black body radiation. And he said that instead of matter or instead of energy always being continuous, it might actually be um, released or absorbed in certain set amounts. And he called these amounts quanta. Um, and that's the plural form. Quantum down here is the singular form. So a quantum is the smallest amount of energy that can be emitted or absorbed um, as electromagnetic radiation from an object. So you can think of a quantum as kind of like a little packet of energy. And I have an analogy down here that I think is helpful for me at least to understand quantization. Um, you can think about the notes that are produced by a violin in comparison with those produced by a piano. So we could think of a violin as being continuous and it's sort of an analogy for continuous energy and then the piano is our analogy for quantized energy. Um, a violin if can produce any note when you put your fingers on the bridge at the right spot and pluck the strings in the right way or play the, the I don't know, that little fiddle thingy. I don't know what it's called. I don't play a violin. Um, but you can get any sort of note to be produced from a violin. However, a piano, which I am more familiar with, I grew up playing the piano, um, when you hit the, the key, only one note's going to come out, unless your piano is really out of tune. But even so, we can't adjust the, the note just from the key. And that is more like quantized energy. It's a set amount, a packet of, of, of energy. Um, and the relationship that Planck came up with, or someone working with Planck came up with, um, is there's a relationship between the energy and the frequency of that energy. So Planck said that energy, or capital E, is equivalent to H times nu, the frequency. Um, so this should be an italics V, I guess, to represent nu, the frequency. Um, and H is Planck's constant. It's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th. And the units of Planck's constant are joules times seconds. And this should make sense. Um, the units of frequency are seconds to the negative 1. So when we multiply these two quantities together, seconds would cancel out. We'd be left with joules, which we know is um, a a unit of energy. <clears throat> so there is black body radiation. Um, that was one of the first giveaways that that energy is not always continuous. And the second is the photoelectric effect. And the photoelectric effect is the the effect of electrons being ejected from metals when they're hit with electromagnetic radiation. Um, so Einstein was also in on all of this um, quantization of energy, and he started assuming that light it travels in energy packets called photons. So he took Planck's idea and said, I think that all of light is not only acting like a wave, but it also has these particle-like properties, so we can think of each piece of light individually like a photon. And he said that the energy of one photon is equal to 
energy, and I'm going to say E photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of that energy. And there we go, it's all on one um, line now. So we can solve for the energy of a photon in incoming light by multiplying the frequency times Planck's constant. Um, and the photoelectric effect that we see, the reason that he came up with this, is because when we shine light on the surface of metal, it can cause electrons to be ejected from the metal. We already said that. However, this is the really interesting part. The electrons will only be ejected if the incoming light has enough energy. Um, and it must be equal to or greater than, or must be greater than the, this threshold energy that the metal requires. And we call that the work function sometimes. It's um, abbreviated with the Greek symbol phi. You don't have to know that. But let me try to explain it a little better by using this diagram over here. Here we have some UV light coming in. Right? And it has sufficient energy to eject an electron from this metal. And we can actually calculate the energy of this electron by um, calculating the energy of the incoming light, figuring out whatever the work function is of the metal. That's the energy required. It's kind of like the energy that the metal absorbs. Whatever is left over, so the difference between these two energies, is um, the energy of our ejected electron. So what we see, though, is that when the frequency of incoming light is not high enough, uh, we get no ejected electrons. So it has to, to be greater than whatever this threshold frequency is of the metal. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at these graphs down here, this is where it gets even a little bit more interesting. What we might expect is that Okay, I can buy the idea that, you know, the, the wavelength of light or the frequency of light has to be some certain sort of frequency before any electrons can be ejected. Um, so what we would see on this graph where we have the frequency of light versus the number of electrons, when we're below this threshold value here, this represents the metal's threshold value, the frequency of light's increasing, increasing, it's not at the threshold value. When we get to the threshold value, probably what you expect to see is that as the frequency increases, we get more and more and more electrons ejected. This is the expected, what scientists expected. And I will just write EX for expected there. However, what they saw and what provides even more um, evidence for the quantization of energy is that we see zero electrons emitted up until that frequency threshold, and then we see the same amount of electrons emitted even as the frequency increases. So it's like this metal has one specific value um, that it will absorb and emit. Now we can change the amount of electrons and we can certainly change the kinetic energy of the electrons by varying other factors, but this model here, which is what we actually saw, um, was really surprising to scientists and yet again provided more, more evidence for this idea that energy comes in packets. It has particle-like properties, and that's what it says over here. Acts like a wave, acts like a particle as well. Right? And the last and third phenomenon we'll talk about that provides evidence for the quantization of energy is emission spectra. And I'm really excited about emission spectra because we'll get to look at these in class. <clears throat> so emission spectra is when we get light from an excited gas or, or energy from an excited gas. Uh, so let's talk about continuous versus um, quantized one more time. Radiation that spans a, a whole array of different wavelengths is what's called continuous. And if we think, of, hopefully we have all done this at some point in our lives, um, taken a prism and held it up to white light. And we should remember that we get this whole rainbow of colors. And that's what this top image is showing here. Um, we've got our white light passing through the prism. We see the whole spectrum, the whole Roy G. Biv. That is a continuous spectrum. Um, <clears throat> when a rainbow appears, that is a continuous spectrum of light because um, the water is dispersing the, the sunlight. So we see the, the spectrum of, of light. And one thing to note is that when we're looking at a continuous spectrum, we don't see any dark spots on it. And I will talk about dark spots in just a second. <clears throat> so this is what scientists kind of expected, but they started realizing that not all radiation is continuous. Um, in fact, when they put a gas in a partially evacuated tube and, and run some voltage through it, 
they see a spectrum, but it is not a continuous spectrum. What they get is a spectrum that only has single colors at very specific wavelengths, and those wavelengths are specific to the type of gas that is being excited. Um, so this example down here <clears throat> is showing that. We've got this excited gas, we are filtering it through a prism, and then we only see specific wavelengths. Everything else is dark. Uh, and that is what we call a line spectrum, because we only get certain lines. Okay, we are going to stop there with emission spectra. Um, we'll pick up there in class. There's just one last thing that I want to point out before you start your homework problems. I think this would probably be pretty useful. Um, we've seen two equations so far in the notes. The first one is the speed of light is equal to lambda times nu, or the wavelength times frequency. And then the second one is this energy equation, the energy of um, electromagnetic radiation, or the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the, the light coming in, or the, the energy coming in. We can put these two together. So a lot of times in problems, you'll be given the wavelength of light, and you'll be asked to solve for the energy of the light or the energy of the photon. Um, a very useful equation is if we rearrange this first one for frequency. We find that frequency equals um, C over lambda. And remember that C is a constant. And then you can actually take this term and plug it in for frequency over here. So what you wind up with is energy equals Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength of light. And this is something I think you'll find really useful when you're solving your problem set. Um, just pay attention to your units as always and come see me if you need some extra help. We can talk about some of the homework problems in class as well. See ya. Have a great weekend.